So let's take a look at one of the uses for continued fractions, and we can use them to find numerical solutions to equations that might be difficult to solve otherwise. And this is a method that's due to Lagrange, an 18th century French mathematician. So intuitively, what we're going to do is we're going to find a continued fraction expansion for a solution to our equation. So we're going to uh, do this as follows. Suppose alpha is the solution to some equation f of x equals 0. And so by trial and error, what we're going to do is we're going to find consecutive whole numbers that trap a solution to the equation. And notice that if we do this, we have actually the first step in our continued fraction expansion of alpha. We found the greatest integer less than alpha. Well, we'll let alpha be a1 plus 1 over something, and then we'll substitute this into our original equation, and that'll give us a new equation in a new variable, and we'll repeat. We'll find two consecutive whole numbers that trap our solution, and again, that's going to give us another integer plus a leftover portion, and we'll repeat this for as long as we care to. For example, let's find the first three convergence in the continued fraction expansion of a quadratic equation. And so I'll note that there is a solution in the interval between 9 and 10, because if I substitute in 9, I get something less than 0. If I substitute in 10, I get something that's greater than 0. I don't really care what it is. Uh, the intermediate value theorem guarantees that there is a solution in this interval. So I'll let x equal 9, that's my integer part, plus some fractional amount. And if I substitute and expand and collect and simplify, I get this as my new equation. Now, once again, I'm going to look for where I might find an integer solution. And so I find that if y is 1, the value of this expression is less than 0. If y is 2, the value is greater than 0. So I know that y is 1 plus something. And anything you do once, you can do any number of times. So I'll substitute y equals 1 plus 1 over z into my equation. And after all the dust settles, I get a new equation. And once again, I'm going to let y be 1 plus 1 over z. And so again, I'll check out some different values for z. And again, it turns out that I have a solution someplace between 1 and 2. So I'll let z equal 1 plus 1 over w. I'll substitute it in. And at this point, I'll stop. So what do I have? I have x equals 9 plus 1 over y. y is 1 plus 1 over z. z is 1 plus 1 over w. And there is the beginning of my continued fraction expansion of the solution. And if I want to find the numerical value of the solution, I can just read off the convergence. So my first convergent, just 9. My second convergent, 9 plus 1 over 1. My third convergent, 9 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1, 9 and a half, and so on. And so what this tells me is that these are successively better approximations to a positive solution of this original equation. And I know that the solution is in between these two values, between 10 and 9 and a half, because two successive convergence always trap the actual real number. What if I have a uh, cubic equation? So let's try that again. By trial and error, I find that there is a solution to this equation someplace between 3 and 4. So I'll let x be 3 plus 1 over y. And I'll substitute that into my equation. And after all the dust settles, I get a new equation. And again, by trial and error, I find that there's a solution to this equation someplace between 19 and 20. So I'll let y equal 19 plus 1 over z. I'll substitute that in. And after all the dust settles, I get a new equation. And again, by trial and error, I find that the solution z exists between 7 and 8. So I'll let z be 7 plus 1 over w. And I can continue this for as far as I care to. In this particular case, I only care to find the first three terms of the continued fraction expansion. So I can form that as follows. I know that x is 3 plus 1 over y. y is 19 plus 1 over z. z is 7 plus 1 over w. So taking that into account, x is 3 plus 1 over y, y is 19 plus 1 over z, 
and z is 7 plus 1 over w, and so my continued fraction expansion is going to look like this. And if I want to find the actual numerical values, I'll take a look at the convergence. So the convergence are going to be 3, 3 and 1 19th, 3 and, we have to do a little bit of arithmetic here, 7 134ths, and it's worth noting that that last conversion, 3 and 7 134ths, gives us a value of this expression that's very, very close to 0. So 3 and 7 34ths is very close to the actual solution to this problem.